On the mainland, the express trains were all pulled by diesels. It had been this way for years, but something the engines of the Fat Controller's Railway took pride in was the express was pulled by Gordon. James and Henry took turns taking it when he was ill, and on rare occasions, Bear would take it as a last resort. On one of these occasions, Bear backed down into the sheds at Vickerstown. He was worn out from the last minute trip with the express. He noticed Boko was already there and tried to be as quiet as he could, but just as he backed down, he could hear his engine growl as Boko let out a soft yawn. <sighs> oh, morning, Bear, he yawned. Uh, I'm afraid it's not morning. It's the middle of the night, Bear replied, feeling a bit guilty. But Boko just laughed. <laughs> middle of the night for some, maybe, he chuckled. I have to get up soon anyway. I have to take the midnight goods to the mainland. Bear smiled, but as Boko was getting ready to leave, he spoke up. Uh, aren't you tired of always taking goods, he asked. I mean, I take my fair share too, but I also help with the express. Or at least some stopping trains. Boko thought for a moment. Hmm, it would be nice, but I'm not reliable enough for passenger work. Or so the men on my old line would say. Better just keep out of sight with the goods, he grinned. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a train, as he oiled away. Bear was left in thought. Boko seemed happy enough with the goods, but he couldn't quite understand what he meant about not being reliable enough. And all his time on Sodor, he had never known Boko to break down once. He was still thinking about it the next day as he took the return train home. Stopping at Edward's station, the old engine noticed Bear's expression. Oh dear, what's wrong, Bear, he asked softly. The big diesel explained. Edward sighed. Boko's class was very prone to engine troubles, he explained. The fat controller soon put him right, but the rest of his class were not so lucky. Boko worries if he breaks down, he may end up going the same way as them. He knows the fat controller would never allow it, of course but can't overcome his fear. Bear felt more sorry for Boko than ever. Oh, Edward, we have to do something. We can't have him thinking he's not good enough for passenger work. Edward thought for a moment. Hmm, I have an idea. And he quickly explained it to the Diesel, who laughed as he heard it. Oh, perfect, we'll do it tomorrow. The next day, Bear had to take the express again. He made his way down the line until he was about to reach Henry's tunnel, and he began to cough. His driver was concerned. That doesn't sound good. We'll just stop at the other end of the tunnel and look you over, he said. <laughs> Not if I can help it, Bear smirked to himself. As they entered the tunnel, Bear began to slow down until he came to a stop right in the middle of the tunnel. Both Bear and the last coach were firmly inside the tunnel. Oh, well, that's torn it, sighed the driver, as he stepped down to call for help and warn oncoming trains. Edward was sitting in the shed with Duck and Boko when the Fat Controller arrived. Duck was about to back down into his berth when the Fat Controller stopped him and climbed up onto his cab to address the other engines, leaving the Great Western engine to roll his eyes. Bear has broken down with the express, he began, and we need another engine to take it on. Oh, uh, could I do it, sir? Edward puffed innocently. I'm sorry, Edward, but it can't be a steam engine. He stopped in the tunnel, and by the time you'd couple up, your crew would feel quite unwell due to the smoke buildup. Edward pretended to look upset as the fat controller continued. Broco, you shall help Bear. Boko felt nervous, but agreed nonetheless. You've got this, Boko, Edward whispered supportively. Oh, I hope you're right, the big diesel said as he set off. When Boko arrived, he backed down onto Bear. You okay, Bear? He asked. Nothing broken badly, I hope. But Bear just smiled. Oh, I, I'm sure I'll be all right, he said with a sly grin. Boko didn't notice, as with a loud hoot, which echoed throughout the tunnel, he set off. As they raced through the countryside, Boko began to enjoy himself. And soon, his worries about breaking down were long left behind. As they arrived to Vickerstown, Boko helped Bear to a sighting. Ah, oh, there. The men will take care of you, Boko explained. 
<laughs> thanks, but I don't think they'll find much wrong with me. Bear winked. Bogo was confused at first, but when he understood, he laughed. <laughs> you sly thing! The big engine chuckled. Blame Edward, Bear replied, as the two friends giggled like naughty schoolboys until it was time for Boko to go. Until next time, Boko called out. Until next time, Bear repeated as the two friends parted company and Boko felt more like a proper engine. He even asked the fat controller if he could help with the stopping trains and now feels right at home pulling alongside Bear. Bear.